Okay, one question I, I'm, I'm very curious to know. When you were in school, were you always like the talented, tall, handsome boy? Or were you like rag? Were you a nerd? Like, what were you like in school, basically? Man, school was the worst time in my life because I was so like, I didn't pretend. I had a rough time. So, really? Yeah, yeah, so I. Uh, no wonder that I pretend. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, so I guess I was just really tall and really lanky and I didn't fit in anywhere. And, I was a sports guy. So were you underconfident? Somehow that's something I always had too much of. Really? Despite not fitting in, you had a lot of confidence? Yeah, because I was, you know, I was like the, the like I was the rebel without a boss. I had nothing to rebel about, but it was smart? like, my, it was like my reset position. Did you do well in school? Like, were you smart? Up to a certain grade, and then after I got too distracted by like, sports and girls. And so basically nothing's changed. Yeah. Still doesn't fit in, still too much confidence. Yeah. Still distracted by things that you shouldn't be distracted by. Like what, Janita? Please tell me what I shouldn't be distracted by. Whatever you said, you know, yeah. sports and sports. Girls. I shouldn't be distracted by. You know, who's that one person in the, in the music industry for the industry? Oh, God. You have to take names. Yeah, who you would have never guessed would have made it. Like, that one person you're like, dude, how did that person slip through the cracks? Me. How did that That's not allowed. That's cheating. How's that cheating? It's cheating. It's not cheating. Because it's not true. I, um, but I'm like an outsider and I'm not half as talented as a lot of people who like live in Bombay with Rana. You know, this is why I don't like more talented people. They're like that, that fake humility bullshit. It's like, oh, I know I, I don't deserve to be here, but you know, I just, I'm lucky. I'm just freaking lucky, like, you know. No, I'm also hard like God I'm and lucky. God sneezed and suddenly I got a freaking film fair. No! I didn't get a film fair yet. Oh. I think everything back. Arjun does like a bazillion things. He owns businesses, he acts, he uh, sings sometimes, he writes, books, all that. So juggling all of those different roles, how do you feel you are as a leader? Are you able to delegate? Are you very involved? Do you feel like you're really picky and nobody can ever do things the way you like it? So is that why you have to do everything? <laughs> you direct your own videos, like you know. I don't direct one. Oh, okay. So uh, I used to do. I used to be like a person who was like picking around everything. But then you know, as you work, you kind of meet a lot of people with trust. And now with like a great team, I trust, and I don't. I don't know anything anymore. Honestly, I'm just kind of like chilling all the time, doing parties. Thinking about soccer. Yeah. Presently, it's a single group. To be honest, it's not too many. Uh, but yeah, think people are like sports, the gym. Keeping myself healthy. Those things are the things that I do yoga on which is a cool thing. Me too. Yeah, you do? Yeah. Uh, yoga's the best one. You guys should try. Especially for us, you know, like late 20s. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Keep it fit. Yeah. Well, in general, well, yoga's more than physical, it's like mind fitness. But I feel like we have like a, I have an edge there. I've never seen you so much of the meditation. Actually, we see it that way. Yeah, I think I do. Which we should. Yeah, I do. You should. Yeah. yeah, I don't always see that way. No? no. I like stress about something. Sometimes singing stresses me out. I'm not going to lie. Sometimes performing stresses me out. So that's what good. people ask me, like studio versus live. Mm -hmm. Like it's such a hard question for me to answer. Is that a hard question for you to answer? For me, it's always, live is always easier. I love live. You prefer live or the studio? Live. I love it. I love being on stage. I love it. For me, studio is all about, like, if it's my own session, I love it. If it's someone else, it's always about, like, you know, living up to the expectation. And I'm like, but some you know. of the most magical moments happen in studio when you're with people and you're feeding off of someone else's energy. That's, that's true. Right? It's true, but it's also so much of, like, there's a, there's a big variable that they really can't do. Live, I feel like, you know, everything just kind of flows. You just kind of, if you just let it all go, then you don't have to control anything. It's too weird, it's like you can bring on your best friend. That's so interesting, I feel the exact opposite. Really? Yeah. Like I feel like I have more freedom in the studio. On stage, because you have that one shot, it's like there's added stress and pressure at like not screwing up. In the studio, it's like you can just run wild and then not use it if it's so good. I don't know the last time I ran wild in a session, but yeah. I, I, really? I don't know. Like I'm always like all about the composer comes in. Right, but the composer sometimes lets you, like at the end. Oh yeah, right? that last bit of every session, just alap kar Yeah, yeah, just play this song. I'm just going to 
run the song once, just sing anything. Like literally anything. Two, three times, literally. <laughs> the last time I did a session, and uh, it, was, it was, actually that was the most fun part. That's what? You it can do this. And then, so you get some really like cool moments and capture some nice. My last studio session was really stressful. And th that's why, actually, that's what I'm thinking about. It was Pitanda, he wasn't there, and they had to release the song the next day. Sky So they called oh, me the day nice. before the release, and I had to take a flight. So oh, wow. I was I was at the studio by 9 o'clock, my flight was at 11. And because he called me 8.30. Mm -hmm. And uh, I finished the song 10.30, I knew I was, wasn't going to make it on the flights the next morning. It was like just stress. When was the earliest you've ever recorded a song? Like, time-wise? I don't know, honestly. Great question, actually. Yeah. So, is it because of your voice? Or I, yeah, it's because of my voice. Also, because I feel like, you know, I, you know, I don't like to do stuff that I don't want to do. I'm a bit like spoiled in that sense. Is that you know, a lot of musicians they don't have the privilege that I do of doing whatever I like to do, and I appreciate yeah. that. That's 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 a big deal for me. But you know, I really respect people. You know, just do everything, and they, you can just kind of like change their mindset. I can't. I need to be in the space that I'm in when I want to be there. I'm kind of like that. I switch. Yeah? yeah. I can't do that. I have mad respect for that. For me, I need to be like, I need to be in the right space and with the right people. Like, I really don't want to be here right now. Yeah. But I, I'm really turning it on for the camera. I didn't want to be with you. Like, I can feel that in this Yeah. I try, I try to keep it genuine, but you know, sometimes it's still fun. It's always My earlier session, not that you asked, but was at... <laughs> 7 a.m. again is a flight thing. Yeah. It's the only time. Flights are the worst when you're coupling them with sessions because then you are just, even if you have three hours, you're just thinking that, oh my god, I'm going to be here. To, to put a cap yeah, on creativity, to put a timeline on creativity, you keep so much stress. anxiety. Yeah. It's stress. Yeah. But you have to. I another question, that leads me to another question. When you know you're done with a song, I can't. I can never remember. So what I've started doing is like now I've got two people on my team who are really good musicians and I just tell them like what do you guys think? And if it's like a majority I just like it. So I did my last song, I dubbed it in one day, mixed it in one day. Everything was just like, what do you guys think? And then we like, go. And we like go. And even after we were done with the master, I was just like, God, I think this can be changed. I just I just stopped and so I was like, no, this has to stop. You know, we have to let go of the things that we made. Because otherwise we just we spent months on this one song of mine I spent seven months on it. There's a whole album I've written, which is with me, I've never released it. It's just got twelve songs on it. And it's just with me. And I just I'm just like, why oh, you keep this bit? Yeah, knowing where the line is and where you have to just stop and release. Yeah. It's the skill. One musician you like today. One Indian musician you like to date. He's half Indian. No, he isn't. No, he isn't. No, he isn't. He is not half Indian. I'm not sure should I date. No, no, no. You don't like to date. But I don't want to date. You don't want to date any Indian musician. I don't want to date. Like, the sentence ends. Oh, yeah. okay. So you're done we with had this conversation. You're done with dating. I'm not done with dating. I'm not currently in the space. I think you need to want to date for, for, for dating to be successful for you. That's true. You are completely in a relationship. Um, Work-life balance, all that's great. How would you, uh, like, do you ever picture putting kids into the mix? Like, do you want to have kids? Wow. How so do you, you feel like, about, how you, you feel? are like dating. Let's, dating. Let's, let's, like, talk that by, like, yeah. babies. Yeah. Like, this is your space. This is... I'm sure the nation wants to know. Um, what does Arjun Kanungo think of babies? <laughs> you know the answer to this, that's what I'm asking. It's a great answer, you really do want to know. I don't like babies. Like I like them, but I like Said no one ever! I like them, I like them, I like them. It's just that I don't wanna I don't wanna like talk about them all the time. You know like how people get together and like discuss babies? Actually, I also find like new new parents a little annoying sometimes with their babies. But then everyone's just like, look at this baby, let's talk about his cheeks and his nose. I'm like, it's a baby. And then they're just showing you like every single moment of that five minute period of them like brushing their teeth or, wait, babies don't brush their teeth. <laughs> 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 I'm 
You know, there's some things as a parent you shouldn't share with other people, like... Maybe, maybe. Uh, no, I mean, yeah, of course. Because, <laughs> you know, that's never good. But, uh, <laughs> just don't tell us that your baby was really loud the night before. Like, it's your problem. It's not something I know. But, you know, I, don't, yeah, I have no sympathy for you. You chose this. You chose this life. And you were like, you know, okay. I want to have this baby. And I want it to shit all over the place and <laughs> walk around and make noises. Who chose this? So don't tell me about I have a lot of friends who have a baby stuff. Do you never complain and about work? Keeping up at night? Oh, no. I slept really late because of uh, session? I don't complain. That's not what I do. Okay. Complain is... Okay, so you're saying don't complain, period. If today you got more famous for your TikToks than your music, yeah. what would you feel? I think that'd be cool. Are you okay with that? Yeah. Are you lying for the camera right now? Uh, what do you think? No, uh, I think that'd be cool because I'd still be singing. It's not like I'm going to change my career and become a TikToker full, full time. Yeah, and that will bring attention to my music. They know you for the stuff that you did on TikTok, which is one music. Like yeah. the thing you did, which is so funny, the, the, the opposite one, uh, which was just the opposite of everything. See, and that I did because I, I, I had fun doing that. And that was very neat. I have nothing against it, but I don't think that is all you do. But, uh, no, I don't I, think anyone thinks you have anything against it. Yeah, I, I love to. I'm just asking because there's this stigma on new social media platforms. Yeah. And I had it. I used to. I had it for YouTube. Yeah. We had it for YouTube. Like when YouTube came out in India. Oh, yeah. I never had it for YouTube. Yeah, but I, 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 I did because I, I switched really quick. Really quick. I went from being like a YouTube person to like a mainstream person, like, you know, with a one song. Yeah. And people would just like stop making covers, stop doing this, oh, you know, but did you feel that? No, I mean, I, 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 don't, I don't think I got to the world. I should have got to be in the I didn't. I feel, I feel like I should have, but that's not the good I have. Because I feel like you're doing such a great job. Yes. It's a fantastic platform. It's also a platform. Yeah. And I feel like the reason I'm asking that is because, you know, it's a new world. It's a brand new world. Like, the way we look at music, the way we look at social media is changing, like, every day. Yeah. Today, you know, your biggest stars are people who are not known for their music, or not known for their, uh, or their art as such. They're just popular on the platform and they're hella popular. I mean, like, you know, they're 20 million followers. I mean, because they're social media stars, they're not artists as such. So, what I was basically asking is that would you, be, would you prefer to be an artist or would you prefer to be a social media star? I would prefer to be an artist. Got it, Tarita. Yeah. Got it. So my but question is... Those that. are not mutually exclusive, so it's a hard question. It isn't anyone. Yeah. So, yeah. On a scale of 1 to 10, according to you, how good is your latest single, Muna Jaiba, compared to the body shape? That was the Muna Jaiba is my heart. That was right before, right? Yeah. Muna Jaiba is my best single. Ten. That's I would say it's my best single ever. You know what? I have, I have, I have a philosophy of this. My singles are like my girlfriend. The latest one is the most important. Have you ever had to promote a song that you didn't like? Never, yeah, because I don't do stuff I don't like. You come back to the same thing. I don't do stuff I don't like. I just don't do it. Like it's just, I'm incapable of it, which is why I feel it's good. You've never sung a song for a composer that released? I just don't do it. Like if I don't like the song, I don't do it. I ask for the song to come. Always. I mean, there are few composers where I'm like, I can go and blindly and just sing the song. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know what? Yeah. But with anybody new, I just don't do it myself. I need to hear what I'm getting into because for me... But it's not It's not necessary that, you know, the few composers that are generally your state, that's... It's not necessary that you like the song because a lot of these composers are very diverse and style and they make very very wide range of songs and it might not be your vibe. Plus there are songs that you'll listen to and you'll like it, but then when you play it as a singer to sing it it's a different story. Do you feel that way? I feel like I don't deserve some of the songs I've got. But to answer your question, I have never done anything I don't like. Short answer. The long answer is there's a lot of composers who reach out to me to sing their song I don't sing. I guess hundred percent of things I don't like. One song you wish you had sung? Uh, Kunguru? Oh, damn, it's a good song. 
very good song. It's a good song. I wish I had some better. It's a, like a standout song, I think. I also feel like Bala is a good song. Do you think it's a good song? No, I mean, I, I don't think I could talk to the show. She's not even talking. I don't feel like I could talk to the singers. I just really like the song. I'm just so obsessed with that song. It's like kind of obsessed with it. It's so quirky and video so quirky. Who was the last person you stalked on Instagram? Let's see. I'm honored. No, no. I would like to thank you and the last person. Carla, because she probably was using your phone for a minute. Where do you see yourself two years from now? Two years from now. Two years, not five years. I don't even want to. I see myself, needless to say, I see myself killing it. <laughs> but. When are you going to stop? Yeah, I know. I know. It's like, it's been a while, right? I've been waiting for me to start killing it. I think the next two years are going to be good. I think I'm going to do a lot more of self-branded material because I finally, in the last year, really come into, um, like I, I think I'm allowing myself to be myself more often in public, which I really struggled with before. Um, so I feel that's going to translate into my music. Why do you think that happens? Why do you think? Because I care so much about what people think. No, but what, what made you change? Being open. I think I've given myself some credit now. It took me a while to be like, listen, you are a credible artist. People respect you. I feel I was fighting for that the most in the beginning, to be honest. And now I feel like I don't need to worry about that so much anymore. And I need to worry more about what kind of music and what kind of content brings Jonita out the most. Instead of like, the Jonita that I feel I'm supposed to be to impress my colleagues. Yeah, well, I've always heard her. I thought she always thought she was like a superstar. But you know when I have to tell you story, I reached out to Jonita and I was just like telling you something. I was like, you think she'll do it? Like, so Jonita's always so famous. And I wasn't that famous though. Yeah, but for me, we were like, I had 1,000 subscribers. <laughs> it was like, just, it was my second video. And I was just like, oh my god, Jonita agreed to do my video and I was like, wow. Yeah, I when I found out, I'm like, who's this guy? Like, also, also, I was like, where did he come from? I was like, seriously, like, how has someone who's like, he writes his own music, he records himself, he produces his stuff, he like, looks like this, like he's really tall and he's a really good looking guy. Again, this is weird because I'm complimenting you. But, I'm really awkward, my yeah, I know. But he's a good looking guy, come on, he's a cutie. I don't believe. Um, Blushing. He's not even blushing though. Wait, waste. I was excited because I was working with somebody who I felt was about to blow up. Never happened though. <laughs> He's just really we're just, yeah, we're just we're just trying to be I think we we are both like in that space now where we, we trust our own work. What do you have to say to new musicians who come into the same way? It's the most important thing you need to have to make it a music. The one single thing that we need. Without that, you cannot succeed. Constant reality checks. That was a really fast answer, and I hope it's all encompassing. But I feel like it is. Good. You need to have a very realistic view on the industry and yourself. So, but do you think there's something such as a realistic view or something like an industry? Um. Yes, I feel there are some people living in denial. There are like the TikTok haters, for example. Yes. They are living in denial. Dude, they are totally living in denial. Right? And the only person who loses is you. <laughs> if you want to just like not get with the program. So, yeah, I think it's important to, and, and similarly balance. Like, and this is actually a question I wanted to ask you, was striking a balance between what you feel will work versus what you like that's very important do you agree i think that some point i just decided i'm going to do stuff i like i'm petrified about time that comes in the future that my work will have to be adjusted to what might be doing. i so far i think i've been lucky in the sense that people have liked what i've made like just by accident i'm petrified about the time that will come for sure i 
and then I will need to control the Because taste also yeah, changes, right? Yeah, I think taste yeah. changes. So, including our own. Yeah, yeah including our own. So we, I'm, I'm very proud about what I'm going to do, because knowing the person that I am, and my stubbornness to do this for the sake of art, I'm petrified of what will happen when that happens. When I, I'll need to change the way I'm doing things, or I'll change, to change my sound, or just being myself at home. It's like my number one fear in music, right? What happens if I don't, I'm not going to do How do I adapt? How, I have no idea how to Yeah, because another thing is the whole reality check thing. You need to recognize if and, if and when, and hopefully never if this happens, but if and when you're, take, you're making decisions out of desperation or out of unideal motivation, like motives, basically. Things that are driving your decisions. You need to be conscious and aware of that because, and it's not to say that, like, let's say fame is driving you. That's not a bad thing, necessarily. Not at all. But you have to be aware of it because I think otherwise you'll start making decisions that you regret. I think you have to lose all judgment in the yeah. universe. Judgment of yourself, of other people, and you have to just look at what's working and what's not working. And kind of build yourself in a way that it's difficult for people to become relevant when they're not able to lose judgment. Because they're just like, oh, I feel like this is how things should be. And the truth is, there's no reason why things should be any anyway. It's just the way they are because people are a certain way. And that's a really, really existential answer. But all I'm saying it's is... It's actually all related. Yeah, it's all... I think you have to forget that, you know, you can stop feeling like you don't know as much as you think you I don't know when I started, I was like, dude, this is how, this is what's wrong with the industry. Yeah, I never had that problem. Yeah, I, I had that problem. Been <laughs> which is why it took me, which is why I think doing that found it so weird that it just came out of nowhere. Because for the first five years, that's all I was doing, I was just criticizing people. I was just like, this is... I'm so glad I didn't know you then. I was just like, no, but not outside, like in my head. I was like, this is, what are they doing? Like, why is it like this? And then when I finally got rid of that, I had like a, a kind of like a thing where I was just like, dude, you are a piece of shit. And, you know, um, and uh, and that's when I realized that you know, I, I got to really build this and I, I got to like be myself and see what happens. Get with it. It's really hard to put this at all. It's really hard. And that's what you need to do and turn to be able to say something. Sure. Well, this was a great interview. I hope that you found this insightful, whoever is watching. Um. No. He loves me. And that's how the interview shall end. <laughs> Subscribe to Midday India. Get direct notifications on all our videos by clicking on the bell icon.